a brand new study I like to start tonight and not sure how far we're going to get but I like to study the disciples the apostles and maybe other New Testament people and tonight I want to begin our study May the Lord will give me something else but right now I want to look at our study I want the Lord uh, the Lord wanted me to speak about Andrew. Andrew means a strong man or manly. That's the meaning of the name Andrew. And he first shows up in Matthew 4, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee that's up north, You'll see the Sea of Galilee many times in the life of Jesus. Saw two brethren, two brothers. Simon called Peter. There's Peter. Simon Peter. We know Simon Peter. And Andrew, his brother. So here we have Simon Peter. And we are introduced to the brother. The lesser known, the lesser spoken about Andrew. And yet Andrew stands out much in the Bible. And let me ask you one question. Just ask you one question. And I'm not here to, to nitpick. I'm not here to point fingers. Yeah, right. When was the last time your church had a study or even mentioned the name Andrew? Though he only shows up 13 times in 12 verses, 10 chapters, he isn't a very important person. Notice 13 times. 13 in your Bible is rebellion. 12 verses, that's Israel. 12 is the number of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And 10 chapters, that's 10 is the number of Gentiles. Genesis chapter 10, the, the, the mentioning of the, of the nations, the birth of the nations through Noah's three sons. So Andrew is very important. And they're casting a net in the sea for they were fishers. Okay. Simon Peter and Andrew. On the Sea of Galilee. Were what we would call fishermen. And they used nets. There's all kinds of different ways to catch fish. Those nets will also be found throughout the, the Gospels. They're very important. And he, Jesus, said unto him, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And they, both Andrew and Peter, Peter and Andrew, straightway left their nets and followed him. Jesus comes walking by. He sees the two. He says, come with me. They put the nets down and they went. No second guessing. No doubting. No argument. Let's go. Okay, we learned about Peter. What about Andrew? Andrew will be a great character for new Christians in the church to be, all right, let's get up and go. We're having visitation on such and such night. Be there. And hopefully a message would strive them to, okay, I'm going to get up and go. I'm going to get up and give up the television program, I'm going to get up and give up the baseball plays, I'm going to get up and give up whatever I do, I'm going to give it to Jesus. That's a good message. I've never heard it preached. Andrew, we're not talking about Peter today, Andrew, at the voice of Jesus, got up, forsook and follow Jesus. And today Jesus tells us in Mark 
Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And Christians don't move. They're surely not Andrew. I just realized something. Okay. So, we move to Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. You can hear me turn the pages too. And it's hard for me, so I apologize. Matthew chapter 2. I'm 10, verse 2. Now, the names of the 12 apostles. The apostles of Jesus Christ. There are 12 of them, and, and their names are the first. Simon, who was called Peter. There's Peter. And Andrew, his brother. So Andrew is also a disciple of Jesus and apostle of Jesus. According to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Matthew, Mark, and John recording. So Andrew is important. He forsakes all, he goes, he's one of the twelve. He's one of the twelve. Mark, Gospel of Mark, six, 1, 16. And he's not, in, he's not mentioned much, but where he is mentioned, there's a big deal. I don't mean to say a big deal. I'm telling you, there's, there's importance. Mark 1, verse 16. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So they are actively working. They are doing a job. They're not sitting down having Coca-Colas. They're not sitting down at a coffee break. They're not sitting at a table playing poker. They are fishing. Now, granted, listen, I grew up with lobstermen in Connecticut. And, and there are times, you know what? Yeah, you, you they had a shanty. Whatever, whatever, they called it a shanty. But, you know, there was a table there with a whole couch and all that. And you just sit back and you talk. And some would drink and some would play poker and stuff like that. And some, you know, they just took a break from doing their work. But here they are working. Look what it said. And Jesus said to him, come unto me, I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. They gave up their job. Andrew gave up his career. Andrew, I'm, not, I'm just saying, uh, went to the boss. I'm going to follow Jesus today. You know, there have been many missionaries who have done that. There have been many men in the ministry who have done that. They walk up to their bosses. They walk up to their career. And they say, goodbye. I'm following Jesus. And they didn't make a million. They survived. It amazes me in America today, you got pastors of churches. They got houses, they got cars, they got, you know, they go play golf and, and they do this and they do that. And there's a missionary living in, in the third world country. He's got a shack. Aluminum roof that leaks. No walls. And the people are sitting on rocks and, and trees and whatever they can find. And they'll come for miles on their foot. 
to hear the word of God and they will preach all day long. And they'll get, no, we got the world's great, we're, we're, we're a great church, we're a great pastor. No, you don't meet with, with the missionaries. Churches today are giving up services. We don't need Sunday, we don't meet, need midweek, we don't need visitation. But man, we got movie night, we got bowling night. We got Jesus night. You know, you play bingo instead of Jesus. We got face painting. We got clowns. We got... Dun, 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 dun. That's not Andrew. And you know what? I don't think Andrew... We're talking about only Andrew tonight. I don't think Andrew knew what he was going to bring himself into. Because let me tell you, Andrew later on will go all through Asia preaching the gospel and he got to a place called Erex E G E T I spelled it wrong and the leader, the king, whatever of that city told Andrew, no, you're not preaching that Jesus. You are violating our laws with our idols and our gods. And he preached the gospel. And they crucified him. Instead of nailing him to a cross, they tied him to the cross. And two days later, while he's still preaching the gospel, tied to the cross, finally just he wore away, closed his eyes, and was absent from the body and present with the Lord. You know, I wanted to read that again. The straight way they left all. Oh. John 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. Mm. Oh, I skipped over, but Mark 13, 3. He is named among Peter, James, and John, and there was Andrew. And he's able to ask Jesus questions, and he's speaking with Jesus, and he's learning from Jesus. He's one of them upfront disciples. He's there with Jesus. He's learning with Jesus. And I would assume maybe 80 to 90 percent of the ministry of Andrew, as he got it out of the mouth of Jesus. You know, you got a King James 1611 Bible. You got it out of the mouth of God. You got it out of the mouth of the Holy Spirit. You got it out of the mouth of Jesus. You don't need a foreign Bible. You don't need a, a modern Bible. You need the old 1611, the Word of God. And you need to obey it. No, I don't either. That's why I got to confess my sins. John 1, 40. You got to turn the page. One of the two which heard John the Baptist spoke, followed him, was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. So before Andrew becomes the disciple, an apostle of Jesus, Andrew was a follower of John the Baptist. So Andrew has out of the mouth of John the Baptist, out of the mouth of Jesus out of the mouth of the eleven and maybe even the apostle Paul later this is no second hand ministry of Andrew John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus and there is Andrew and it says here 
Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he first finds his own brother, Simon, and says to him, we have found the Messiah. Messiah. Which is being interpreted to Christ. Christ means the anointed one. We found the Messiah. We found the Christ. Who is it, Jehovah Witnesses? It's Jesus. The Messiah, the Christ, is God. That's Jesus. And you know, you know what Andrew does? He go gets his brother. Hey, Peter, what? What do you want, Andrew? We found the Messiah. Come. So at this point in time, of all the things we're reading about, you know, Andrew is, he's a soul winner. He's bringing people to Christ. See that? Look, let's read it again. He finds his verse 41, his own brother Simon, said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Let me ask you, Christian. I have. Have you ever brought anybody to Jesus? Have you ever showed anybody the, the Messiah? Have you ever shown anybody the Christ, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? I have. If you haven't, you know, you, you let your light shine, you let your salt taste, and you know... And, and, Andrew didn't walk around with a candle. He walked around with his mouth preaching, and it got him across. And he go gets his brother. He says, "Peter, come here. We found Christ." I remember the day I got saved. It was on a Saturday. <clears throat> April 1987 the next day after church I left church I went to my dad in New London, Connecticut and I told my dad, I said dad you're going to hell my, da my dad said oh, don't you tell me to go no dad I'm not telling you to go to hell I'm telling you that's where you're going and I witnessed to, that, to my dad much of the time I witnessed to my dad. He, he was in a nursing home facility in Connecticut, and I'm in Florida. I sent two pastors to visit him to whatever rehab place he was. And he, he didn't, he heard, but he didn't believe. And one of the tracks that one of the pastors gave him, he went about a week later to my brother's funeral, the service. And he was, he had the track in his pocket. Now, I don't know what he's, is he in heaven today? I don't know. I don't think so. I hope so, but nothing can be done. Listen, I had one time, I had a woman come up to me in church. And she, she goes, thank you very much, Tyler. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm like, well, what, what did I do? She goes, my, bro my brother got saved listening to you. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because my brother's in jail and you were in the jail, you are in the jail ministry, and this night when you were preaching, he trusted Christ as a savior. I said, I didn't hear nothing. He, he called me on the phone and told me he put his faith and trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are there going to be anybody in heaven that you witness to? Andrew was a soul winner. Andrew was somebody say, okay, let's go. Andrew said, whoever's preaching the word, I want to hear it. I've let you say you meant to you been you gone to many churches because they don't preach the word. They don't do what the Bible tells them to do. And it's always we, we had one church, you know, the VBS was out, out of this world. And the next one, they were going to have clowns, and they were going. To, the pastor was going to dress up 
as a clown upside down. And they changed the Bible. They were a King James Bible, but they corrected it from the Pope. See you later. Goodbye. So look at that. He is a soul winner. Verse number 44. Verse 44. John 1 40. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So Andrew and Peter lived in the same city with Philip, named Bethsaida. Bethsaida means the house of fish. It's a fishing community. I'm looking John twelve. John 12, 21 or 2, oh yeah, 22, or oh, 20, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to the worship at the feast, the same came there to Philip, which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, Desiring him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip comes and tells Andrew, and Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. There's Andrew again bringing people. This time he's bringing Gentiles to Jesus. You know how many times the disciples would say, no, 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 no. Send those people away. Send those children away. Get rid of them. Let's, not here. Not Andrew. No way. Not at all. Acts 1. Acts 1. Verse 17 or 18. No. 1. 13. Acts 1.13. And where they were come, they went up to the upper room. Okay, upstairs, where are both, both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Bill, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of and, and on. A bold means to stay, to abide, to dwell. Andrew is not only with the twelve, not only is he a saint, not only is he a, a, a disciple, and not only is he in the... Uh, an apostle. After the resurrection of Jesus, he's with them in the upper room. He's with the the twelve. I don't know. They haven't no the eleven. They haven't uh, determined Matthias yet. He's with the eleven in the upper room. He's where he should be. Okay, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, 
20. Matthew 26, 20. I hope. And when they, excuse me, now when the evening was come, they sat down with the twelve. There's Andrew. He's one of the twelve. As they did eat, he said, I say unto you that one of you shall be me to Okay, we're getting to the Lord's Supper. Not only was Andrew at the in the upper room, he was right there at the table of the Lord's Supper. Eating. He partook of the cup and the bread that Jesus Christ served. That's interesting. And one other place I don't know if they'll be able to find it. If not, we can close. Let me finish shot. Expression. It's in there. It's in there. Let me turn a couple pages and see what I can find. All right, it says, Mark 129, maybe. Mark 129. Mark 129. Mark. One twenty nine. It says Mark one twenty nine. And forthwith, when they went, when they come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon. There's Peter and Andrew. So Simon, Peter, and his brother Andrew. Were fishermen together. They lived in the same house. They're in the same city, Bethsaida. They both get up and go and follow Jesus. And we hear more about Peter. But we don't hear much on Andrew, who is a perfect example for Christians to get up and follow Jesus. 